Hi guys, welcome to Game with DJs. Tonight we have DJ Jamfu, and we're going to go through uh, the DJ and scene, a bit of the break scene, uh, find his thoughts and views on how he got into it. Jamfu, how are you? I'm doing good, bro. Um, yeah, I can't complain really. Just want to get back to doing my thing on the scene. You get me? Keeping busy. Yeah, of course. Of course. That's what I like. Always. So we're going to try and get this uh, win tonight. That is. That's the aim. That's the goal. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So how did it all start for you? Which part? Well, you was, you was a breaker first, right? Um, yeah, that's correct. So I could start with that story because that's really what kind of kicked it all off for me. So I started breaking at around the age of 15. Uh, so this was back in school, like I was in year 10. Saw some guys trying to break. Uh, in a Christmas show, and <laughs> me and a friend of mine were like, yo, let's, let's, we didn't know what it was at the time, but we were like, yo, let's try and learn it, and then we just started practicing, just doing what, you know, kids do at the time, and it just roll about, try and figure it out, and then after about a year of being self-taught, uh, I found some classes, I don't know if you know Marcel, yeah, you, you know Marcel, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, so he was basically my, my first breaking teacher, so I went to uh, a theatre called the Hippodrome and they were running the breaking classes there and then literally that's how I met uh, the, the early members of NGK like Nini, Ariel, Sam, uh, Marius, like all these guys were there at the time and then literally that's how I got introduced to the whole breaking scene, started competing and during that time, like the early days, because we were always looking for music to practice to new tunes and all of this it kind of led into me DJing and, and finding out about vinyl and then literally from there like the rest is history bro that's sick man like um yeah it's a mad story not a mad story how was breaking for you like did you uh battle quite a lot uh in the beginning yeah but then what what i found quite well, yeah, I'd say difficult was balancing the two because I was quite good at both. Yeah. So obviously I wanted to battle and be on the front line like with my crew. So I did do a couple of battles in the early days. We did Welsh champs, we did like UK champs, regionals, uh, like the qualifiers and that. Uh, but then I was getting asked to DJ for a lot of jams as well. So when my crew would be entering, I'd, I would have been hired to come in. DJ, so I'd have to make a decision sometimes. Um, so yeah, that's that's how that was. But I don't regret any of the decisions, man, because you know playing for some of the battles where my crew was, you know, competing and winning jams and being there and seeing it and being the one behind the turntables. Yeah, it's gonna be like a good controlling feeling. all of that. That's you know that's yeah, man. It just amped me up, and that's what kept me going as well. It kept fueling me to do more and more and get better as well and represent the crew in a different light as well because back in the day crews used to have you know b-boys poppers djs producers it used to be a whole collective so we kind of kept that alive as well it just weren't strictly b-boy that we did that's dope so yeah. as far as djing goes like uh what's the biggest thing you played mm -hmm. out like biggest it's event wise the biggest event Ooh, let me see Oh man, it would have to be, if we're just talking about the b-boy scene, it would have to be UK Champs, uh, I believe it was 2015 that I did. Nice. It would either be between that or, or IBE, uh, I DJ at IBE as well. IBE is huge. So one of the two, yeah, it's a massive event, completely massive. Have you been, you've been, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so then you know the level of b-boys there and you yeah. know, the amount of people that show up as well. It's, at the time, like when I was there, it was there were moments where I'd think, how the hell did I end up <laughs> here? Because it just seemed that surreal. Well, I'm telling you, it was crazy. Absolutely crazy. Well, like, but everyone yeah, I, I spoke it, to, like, uh, Kung Fu, Devo, 3D, they all speak super mm -hmm. highly of you from your yeah, work and yeah. stuff like that. that that's, 
Yeah, because I speak highly of them as well. Like, I've seen the amount of work they've put into it, and to get to that level and, and stay, you really have to dedicate yourself to this craft. It's the same with b-boying, like when you see guys like you know, Hong Ten or you know, that level, the amount of work that goes into it is insane because the people don't really see that work happening behind doors, they only see, see it when they come to the events. Yeah, of course. You get me? Um, yeah, exactly, yeah. So, I get yeah. that little Sheffy when I watch him train, I'm like, fuck, he's on a mad one again. Mm, exactly, uh, exactly. Yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of effort goes into it. So I don't, like I said, I don't think people understand that either. I think people think they can just get it overnight. Mm -hmm. um, Basically, yeah. yeah. <coughs> What's your uh, thoughts on the breaking it scene is. at the moment as it stands? Well, before all of this quarantine business happened, uh, I think the scene was, you know, going strong as always. Um, if we're talking just about the UK scene, um, yeah. obviously the, the last big event we had was BC1 UK. I watched the, the videos from that. Unfortunately, I couldn't be there. Um, but yeah, from what I saw, man, everybody looked strong. Congrats is, to Karam for taking the win. Good event. I was there. Uh, it was real good. Yeah, yeah. So then you know, like the level's high, man. Yeah. And it, it's really dope to see guys who you know I've seen from when they were younger from when I was coming up to still be doing it but now on that level which is dope to see yeah, that's pretty sick man as well it must be nice yeah. from like a DJ perspective as well to kind of mm -hmm. see everyone come up um, yeah yeah I remember seeing Sonny when he was like a little kid back yeah. in at, uh, at breakfast, bro, and he had like he looked like Moby from the Jungle Book. This little <laughs> kid, like with the with the long hair, and I saw it on his videos like, on YouTube, and and then you look at him now, and he's this world famous international b boy. It's like, wow, I was there in the beginning. Yeah, you get me, and it's it's just a dope feeling to have been a part of that his timeline. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's going so along the journey with really people, isn't it? You know. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. Bro, this is too quiet, by the way. I don't know where everybody is. I know, yeah. yeah. Where, where did we land? We landed like yeah, four. Too far up. Where do you want to go? Still Good right there? Map. Still here? Uh, let me just check check the map. Oh, so we'll snap, hang on. Just saw it at the top as well. Inside there, yeah? Yeah, 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 two. Go on the right side when you walk in. That being spotted. No, they're going to wait to the stairs as well. Yep, there they are. Bodied one. Yep. You got any bombs, any grenades? Nah, nothing. I left a rocket launch back there as well. Okay. Not on the floor either. I'm going to RPG. Yo, you know someone? Got him. Nice. He's yes, bro. He's down. He's up. He yeah, said yeah, there were two, right? Yeah, yeah, there is. The other one was out here. Whether that's him just leaving in the helicopter. Left his mate. Alright, we've got a bounce as well. That's a bit of fun. I so know, what, right? <laughs> what kind of kit do you use in your DJ? Nice, easy. 
Um, so I was using a DJ. Do you know much about DJ equipment? Do you know what? I've learned a lot more since we've been doing these sort of things, you know? Okay. Nice. So basically then, I was using a Techniques 1210s. They are the, the silver industry standard turntables. They've been used for like over 20 years. They're literally like indestructible. You can throw them <laughs> down a flight of stairs and they would still work. Um, so they're the ones that I, I, I tend to use because I like to play on vinyl, um, so I use Serato, which is a, a DVS system, so it's a digital DJ system. Yeah. And that basically lets you use, you know, your laptop and your hard drive with your music instead of having to bring a uh, crate load of records. Um, so I use that mainly. I do use controllers sometimes, but when I use them, I feel very limited. Because then you can't you know, do all your cuts and scratches and beat juggling. Um, but it's good just if you want to set up really quickly and play at an event. Um, so yeah, they're what I use. Mixer-wise, I'm good with most mixers because they all work the same. But I prefer like um, battle mixers. So what you'd have in the crossfader is something called an innofader. Yeah. And basically it's just extra like... Uh, it's, how can I explain this? It's like almost like butter in how smooth it is. So when you want to do your cuts, it cuts in the sounding a lot quicker than a normal fade, crossfader would. So you're able to achieve different skills and cuts easier. That's sick. Uh, so that's what I, I'd like to use, yeah. And I'm looking to get um, a new mixer. It's the DJ. Elite loop mixer. Is this stuff quite expensive? A, a grand. Oh but shit. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, DJ equipment or music equipment in general is where you at? You upstairs? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, DJ equipment is very expensive. Even the needles, like a pair of. The needles will probably set you back like a hundred quid. Just it's a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah, but if you're spinning a lot of jams, you can make it back in a week. You know what I mean? True. How many jams you normally kind of do in a year? Basically, yeah. Is that people uh, that? Well, before quarantine, I was probably doing monthly it's probably spinning a jam like once a week that's dope i'd have something going on almost ev every weekend and it wouldn't just be b-word jams as well I'd have residencies at like a place called ghetto golf like it's just a normal bar where people come you know to have drinks and, and play like mini golf and stuff like loads of venues where they need music i would be there that's dope that's I can't do anything for the money. Definitely when you're doing DJ and you can't just stick to the uh, events battle scene wise. Yeah, of course. Of course of course. There's other ways. And I'm trying to break into like the um, the live music scene, so touring with an artist, going uh, to concerts and doing that sort of stuff because I've been working a lot on my production as well. I also produce music. So I'm trying to build up a roster of artists that I can work with and then who knows, maybe one day one of them get a tour going and they need a DJ, a warm-up DJ to That'd come with them. So that's that's the yeah, that's the area I'm trying to move into now. So right here? And it's just getting your name known in Shit, got me, got me, got me, got me. Come here. Where you at bro? Come here. Watch the door. Yeah, it's just getting your name in those circles. It's like the b-boy scene, there's another circle of people that do that specific thing in it. Yeah. And I'm already connected with a group called End of the Week. It's like a collective of rappers based in London. And they hold events. Where have you gone? 
reckon you might have put sleep uh, They hold events. There's a venue called Chip Shop, which is in Brixton. So they hold quite a lot of events there. They've had uh, international guests come there and do sets. So I'm trying to build with them at the moment. They've had to move all of their stuff online for the time being. So they're doing like online seminars, online rap battles, just to keep the movement going. And yeah. they're doing beat battles as well, so I'm getting into those into those circles. Um, so yeah, man, just staying active, bro. That's it. That's what you need as well, bro. Yeah, oh, please definitely. Come. Yep. It helps. They've just come behind us. Alright, coming back. Downed him. Coming, bro. Nice one. Oh, watch the roof. Watch the roof. Oh, snap. Just fired an RPG at me. Oh, shit. Watch it, bro. He's gonna have to come down from there, though, isn't he? Oh, I'm gonna yeah. pop down for someone else. See if he, he can he's get jumped. to me actually now, it's too open. He's gone for his mates. He come down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for the kill. Come in. I think we've got snipers on us as well, ain't we? Down yeah. again. Where'd he go? I got one on the second floor. Behind you, bro. Alright. Watch the gas as well, we got, we got time. That geezer is... It's not my heartbeat. Moving forward a bit. Oh, shit, we got to move. Oh, these guys are still watching us with snipers. Yeah, you see him. I'm actually dodge him. Uh, I've got the uh, recon drone so I can see where they at. These guys are hidden. They're uh, up there. Oh no, what happened? No way this dude is there. Bro, you got any extra plates? Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, shit. He's in this build. Upstairs. Coming yeah, he might be in the build across, shooting across. Just be careful when you come up. I'm in this room. Yeah. Shh, I saw him. He's in the other building, isn't he? I saw them, I saw two of them. Fuck! Out the window, baby? Oh, shit! Oh, my days! <laughs> he sent a rocket launcher in. Did he get you as well? Yeah, man. Oh, evil motherfucker. Oh, another. So, have you got any like inspirations and in DJing? The someone that you look up to? Or got you into a property? Oh. Inspirations? Yeah, I've got many inspirations. Um, in the UK, uh, I would say Renegade, of course, um, when I was coming up. 
he he helped me get put on uh, to a lot of events. So I was studying music production in London, and while I was there, I obviously met him, and I was going to his house, and he would you know teach me some cuts and skills, and give me uh, a lot of history on UK DJs, and obviously he came up with Son of Noise, which is a legendary UK hip hop group from back in the day. Yeah. So he told me all about that. Um, so I'd have Renegade, there's DJs like DJ Harry Love, he's a good one to check out. He produces as well, he's dope. Uh, obviously my man Snuff, uh, for end of the week, me and him used to practice and go back to back at his place. I learned a lot, a lot of him as well, he's been DJing for at least 30 years or something, a very long time. Um, so he's worth checking out. Uh, outside of the UK, there's DJ groups like the Executioners. I don't know if you know the DMCs. You ever heard of this competition? DMCs. Uh, I haven't actually. No. So basically, the DMCs is like I would say the Red Bull BC One of DJ. So yeah. it kind of works in the same way. It's competition based. And um, basically DJs are given six minutes to create a routine. Um, so in a routine they can re-juggle, they can mix, they can do all sorts. And they basically have to make the baddest six minute showcase. And the prize is a gold turntable. That's like, right. I don't know how many I don't know how many carats it is, but it's it's worth a lot. And you get a DMC leather jacket and obviously you get a ton of sponsorship and you get flown over the world and all this sort of stuff. Uh, so they have solos and a duos category. So basically on this, the executioners used to enter it back in the 90s. And there's DJs like Rock Raider, um, Shorty Blitz, who else? Uh, Mr. Sinister, and Cuba. You have DJ Cuba as well. So basically these guys, if you look online, there's tons of videos from back then. The competition still runs now as well, but these guys were killing it back then. And there's uh, a group called the Invisible Scratch Pickles as well. Like I, would, I used to watch a lot of these videos when I was learning myself, and I try and imitate basically what I saw. Yeah. And that's how I got, how I got myself good as well. But then I added my own style to it. And I always wanted to enter the DMCs at one point. Um, it just takes a lot of practice. If you look at the videos, then you'll see how much effort is needed to go into making like, one six-minute routine. It's crazy. Um, who else from the UK as well? DJ Mr. Thing as well. He's really dope. He's from London. He's sick. Um, who else? Who else? On the breaking scene, obviously DJs like Timber, um, Aiden Lacey, which, who's James Lacey's brother. Um, obviously my boy Confu as well. Yeah. And Debo, like all these guys, man. Like the guys who are still active, killing it. Like, Cause it just forces you to want to get better. It's the same in breaking, man. Like you see them as rivals, but in a good way. So, yeah. We need that inspiration, don't you? Like that extra kind of. Of course. Seems to get you it up. It just it keeps you going. Yeah, it keeps you going. Like for example, I saw that new track that dropped. Um, Tian Wayne and Stormzy. It's called I Don't Know. I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, it literally no, just dropped like yesterday. Yeah, it dropped yesterday. It was like number two trending on YouTube. And basically, I've been experimenting and trying to learn how to produce like drill music and, and improve on my grime production. So as soon as I heard that, I was like, wow, I need to get better. And then I just literally got back in the lab and started getting better. Yeah, that's man. dope, that's the inspiration you need though. Yeah. yeah, that's how it works, man. And then, yeah, yeah, that's how it works. But it's always good to have some form of you know, role oh, model, come on. You, can, you can try and be like, I'm lucky, man. 
10th place though, that's not bad bro. We'll take it. That is not bad. We'll take it. They should die quicker though. I don't know, I didn't at least knock one of those. Say that again, bro. I'm surprised I didn't even down one of those. Put a lot of bullets into really? it. <laughs> Get him on the next game, man. Yeah, yeah. Wait to roll up. We'll start the controversial um, questions in a minute, they're the fun ones. Say that again, bro. That's controversial controversial yeah. questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're the fun ones. Oh, not okay. not, yeah, not yeah, too cool. bad though. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. So what's your plans for after Hmm. Well let's see, obviously Try and get some live gigs back. Mm -hmm. I just hollered him and said, "Any idea when things might return back to normal?" And he was like, "He has no idea. It's like it's all messed up." So the first thing would be to get some kind of gig back. But I actually read in the news a couple of days ago that. Um, venues might not be opening for like at least until next year. Oh man, that's fucking um, bad. Yeah, bro. Yeah. And the thing is, as well, because venues have been closed for this long, they might not reopen again as mm -hmm. well. So we might have lost, you know, specific venues. And who knows what's gonna happen, man? Like, this is the new normal right now. I was saying to my girl, like, as soon as this stuff happened, I was like, right, you have to shift your focus and go in a different direction. Yeah. So, we've kind of been living, like, there is no lockdown, there is no quarantine, you get me? We have mm -hmm. to just keep going. Whereas for some people, it completely stopped. Like, the only thing that stopped, in that sense, for me, was the live performing. But I, luckily, I had other things going on and other things I can, you know... Um, put my mind to yeah that's still generating income so yeah I haven't really stopped should we say that's good though yeah it's good to keep yourself active definitely. as well man of course of course mind and body right where do you want to land okay let me choose let's see um, let's go s Promenade East. Oh shit. Cool. Ah uh, yeah, so there's that and I think just, you know, keep pushing the name, keep putting music out. Um yeah. That's 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 what's next. Sounds like uh, a plan to be too fair. So yeah. controversial question number one. Mm -hmm. When you get invited to an event, what kind of things do you expect from the organisers for like uh, helping you out with stuff? Uh, okay, uh, well, first of all, I do expect that there would be uh, you know, beverages or just water on hand mm -hmm. for the DJs because obviously we're there. We basically work from the start of the event till the end. So we're the person who's doing the most work, I would say. Yeah. From my perspective, um, I'm not taking it away from anyone else, but we do, even though it doesn't look like we're doing much, we are doing a lot. We basically control the Everything. vibe of the event. Yeah, you hire a whack DJ, you're going to have a whack event. Yeah. So we, it, your DJ can make or break your entire thing. And I think it's a very important oh, aspect fuck. people need to pay attention to. Did you die already, bro? Mate, I landed and just got wrecked straight away. Oh. How far are you? Oh, you're gone. I'm Onto bored. the gulag, yeah? Yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah, I'd expect that. 
just having you know something on hand for us to keep us going throughout the event because there have been some events well done the entire jam without having any water or something you kidding you know what I mean? because it's quite hard for us to leave yeah but back in my early days you know when i was younger but now i, I don't do that now i wouldn't last bro <laughs> so, yeah but um uh so i'd expect that uh let's see i'd expect obviously to have us on the flyer one thing I'd, that needs to change is when uh, events do recap, you know, recap videos of the event. They need to show the DJ, show more of the DJ in there. Because I've played for some events and then you watch the recap video, the trailer, the showroom, and the DJ's not in there. You might just see a hand on, on the vinyl and that's it. You don't see the person behind it. And obviously, those videos are good promotion for us. Yeah, of course. Um, as well as the dancers, as well as you know the event themselves, it's got to be know, it helps us as well because we're that's what I'm saying. We're trying to run things as well, and DJing is a source of income for some of us. Um, so yeah, I would say get us get us in the trailers, guys. Um, what else did I expect? Um, oh, for fuck's sake! Get oh shit! I'll bring you back. Bro. Cheers, man. I'm kind of in a safe space. <sighs> Didn't realize I deployed my parachute. Oh, I was waiting for that auto deploy. What it else? Didn't happen. Oh shit! Someone's coming. Um. Yeah, they had two major things. <laughs> um. What well, about your travel and stuff like that? Yeah, that's obviously, obviously that has to be sorted. That's more and more on the business side. Those sort of things definitely have to be sorted out. And I would say also for organizers to pay on time, because I've had some organizers pay like a month after the event has happened. Oh, shit. Um, but that comes with you know self-employed work. Same for dancers as well. Like you could be waiting a certain amount of days after you've done the gig. Um, oh, I see someone. Yeah, I'd say, oh shit. Uh, that's one. There's another guy on the roof. I think there's two of them. Yeah, there is a depth him as well. I'm weak. Down on. Hit again. It's gonna be pinned though. You see him there? He was there. Him, bro, him. So if, if, oh. Got him. Never mind. Nice. Yeah, got movement. Clear. I'm alright, my side. I'm gonna grab his armor quickly. Do you get two of them, yeah? I took down one guy. Alright, the other ones around here somewhere then. I'm, I'm moving up towards that vehicle there. He was legit here. Help! Oh. Someone's firing. Someone's up there. Upstairs. Upstairs, yeah. It's 
dead this place? What the fuck is it? Maybe there's a, a ladder on the outside or something. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, there is. Oh, he's out in the street now. Yeah. Where is he? I'm gonna check these buildings. Right, oh, it's on the outside. I can use his drop into that building. I see it's on there. Hit him a few times. Oh shit! Two see people them. up there. On that yeah. roof. See him, see him, see him, see him. Two of them on the roof. Yep. Ooh, got him. Chill. You also have someone on the roof to your left as well. Who was originally firing out? I'm gonna come down. I need some back. I'm just gonna... Whoa, what the hell? Just lag. That's he lag right on. So what you playing on PC? Mark a uh, vendor, bro. What nice. The hell? I'm a game just lag. Uh, Mark a vendor, bro. I can get you back. Um, which one's that way? Might be risky there. The guy was on that building to your right, to your left, sorry. Yeah, that one. Yeah. It's there in the vehicle. Just sitting in there. Surely not. The buy station shot been used. It's weird. Gotcha. Because it should only show up red if someone's in there, innit? Yeah. Might go for that loadout drop. That's funny. Yep. Yeah. Fuck, this was right in front of me again. Uh, oh, he's got a sniper rifle on me. Shit. Alright, uh, hold up. Come in. Yeah, I'm holding back. Stay hidden if you can. Yeah, I am. Oh, shit, no, I'm not. Fuck me. What are these guys? Oh, it's pushing me. This could be the end. Yep. Damn. Fuck. I can't even land, bro. Shit, got ya. Sniper got me as well. Shit. Tonight is not going well. Sniper on it. Damn. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. 
fucker. And his boy was there. Oh. Pressure now. Give it a rest. Never pressure, bro. Come on now. <laughs> watch it, bro. I'm a G at this watch. Come on. Oh, there is. Oh. Okay. Oh, fuck. Got me. That pulled me. Shit. So nasty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go again. Yeah, let's get it. So. Nah, I feel, I feel warmed up now. You feel, feel ready to go? Yeah, man. So, top five b-boys in the UK. <laughs> My top five b-boys in the UK? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Let's see. That's a difficult question. Yep. Let's see. In the UK. Definitely Shepu. Yeah. Once. He, his, his, the text that he comes up with is just insane. At the last break mission, uh, that was in Digger from Birmingham. Watching him, bro, is ridiculous. Yeah, man. Every time I see him, he's coming out with some insane shit. Always oh, something new as well. Can, rounds, man. Rounds upon. Him. Sheku, I'd have to say Sonny as well. Mm-hmm. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we're back now. Yeah, so Sheku, I think we're going to say something about <laughs> Sheku. No, I'm saying it always, it's just, I get to see him train quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I see a progression, man, it's just insane, the stuff he comes yeah. up with. He's like, hey, what do you think of this? Yeah. And I'm like, it's fucking mental, man. Like, where <laughs> does that come from? I bet you see him do stuff like he doesn't even throw out at battles. Yeah. You know, he's like, he's got content. <laughs> like, I don't no, think like anybody realises how big his power is either, because he doesn't use it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I bet his power it's is insane, ridiculous man. as well. Yeah. You know who he kind of reminds me of? Um, B-Boy Ever. Yeah. Remember Ever? Yeah. Yeah, I know Ever, yeah. Like, it reminds me of him. Um, so yeah, Sheku, I'd have to say Sonny as well, really like his stuff. Um, one of my favourites, but kind of didn't, well, he's kind of emerging now. He was emerging when he was younger, but then he kind of dipped off the scene. It would have to be Shahi. Yeah. Do you know Shahi? Yeah, I know Shahi. Yeah. Because I've seen him from when he was a kid, bro. And I could see that he had that potential, just like Sonny did. Mm -hmm. Like he was gonna go in that direction, but then I don't know what happened. Just life kind of hit, and he disappeared off the scene. And now he's come back. Obviously, I saw him at the last break mission. So he's obviously been putting work, putting in work in the lab behind the scenes. And now he's just. If he can have that same impact as Sonny, I don't know, but he's got a lot of potential. Um, so Shahi definitely, I'd have to put there, Spin as well, Spin, he's been yeah. putting in work. The only thing I would say about Spin, it, it might just be me or I don't know if a lot of other people can say it as well, it's just that sometimes you see the same stuff. Um, it might just be because he's always in every competition, um, yeah. getting to like semis and finals and things like this. Um, it might just be because of that, but yeah, uh, don't get me wrong, it's still like high quality stuff, uh, and high level stuff, so yeah, I have to say, Spin is on that list. Uh, One spot got? reserved. Are we, is it just B-Boys or are we adding B-Girls or is that another question? Oh yeah, no, B-Girls, absolutely. B-Girls as well? Mm. Oh fuck! Let's see. Oh my god! Oh, bro. Bro. I'm oh, Where are these guys coming from? I didn't quit, you killed me. Okay, 
Okay, I see them. I see them, I see them. It's fucking ridiculous, man. I'm getting like one gun and just walking out the door and get blasted. I see him. It's two of them. Actually. You had a whole squad on you, bro. I'm lagging like a motherfucker. Oh, it's an RPG. I'm real. Nah, no chance. I played like fucking trash tonight. Normally we're back like 3 to 5 kills per game. Eh. Uh. <laughs> fucking worse. I'm trying to think of one more break. Let's see. Who did I see at the last break mission that was the UK? Mm. Who's killing it? Hmm. I would say Tara, but she's a kid. <laughs> um. Oh man, beans! How did I forget beans, bro? Beans, there it is. I'd say. It takes the last what? Nice. Beans is yeah ridiculous. Always loved his start. And his power's ridiculous. The way he can just combo it together. Yeah. Stupid, bro. <laughs> yeah. Damn, I took five. You've got like... What about yours? Who's your top five? Am I allowed for to me, questions about things that mate, can we do that? Yeah, you feel free, Definitely. bro. Um, for me, um, of course, Sheku. Might be a bit biased, but... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for me. Um, Karam. Mm -hmm. um, Karam, yeah. Riri Karam. Um, then you've got like... Gribbs and Jackson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, um, so I'll re rate and actually one of my favourite B boys in the UK is Razorok. Razorok. Yeah, uh, but has his brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, his dog. His footwork is just fucking incredible. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. I'll, I'll rate that lineup. Sick, sick lineup. But. Yeah, man, I just really like creativity, you know? Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, which is... Which is dope. What's the last event you went to before lockdown? The last jam that I went to? Hmm. I would have to be... Or... What did the... Um, you know, the BBL? British Breaking League. That yeah. Happened. That was for Break Mission. If not, then it would be Break Mission. Hmm. In Birmingham. That was the last B Boy Jam that I was at. I love Break Missions. Was he there at the last one? Um. Which was the last one? Let me think. Um. Who battled in the last one? Um, you had obviously Sheku. <laughs> Sheku won it. Yeah, he took the win. Uh, Shahi was there. You had... Oh, what's his name? Infante. Infante was there from London. From Gully Squad. He was there. Uh, Spin was there. Machine was there. I think he was judging. I think I might be in last year's one. Yeah, it would have been last year's. 
Do you know that, that Brazilian b-boy who's, I think he's living in the UK now, but it's got like tats down the side of his face? Uh, what, Routine? Routine, that's it. Yeah, he was there. He was in the final um, in Shaki, yeah? Yeah, I think it was them two in the final. Uh, yeah, I didn't see that one. I wasn't there for that one. I think I was there um, here before when it was in the parking lot. Yep, yep. I remember that one. Yeah. That was dope. Yeah, that Yeah, break mission was probably the last jam that I, I hit. Uh, mine was Red Bull. Pretty sure. Yeah, Red Bull. Yeah, I wanted to come to that, but had other things going on. But yeah, how was DC1 like, overall? Because I've only seen it from you know the video footage and can't really capture the vibe of an event from the video. So it's decent. I mean, the open cycle was, was really overall? good. Um, mm -hmm. that was really fresh, and then, yeah, man, it's really good, like, stage really good, uh, music mm -hmm. was decent, should we jump straight away? We're top down. Um, it's hot, that's what you're yeah, saying, it's friggin' hot, man. <laughs> but, yeah, it's decent, yeah, I actually, I, <laughs> I it drove, it looked like we, a lot of people were there. It was, man, it was good vibe as well. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on um? Well, all right, we got people coming in. He's landing here, so I'm gonna try and land up there and get a oh, gun. Yeah, I see them. Unless they're gonna. Oh, I'm gonna shoot in the air, you, one bro. Behind you. Watch, yeah, watch you back. I'll take him out for you. He's here. He's landed. Watch it, watch it, watch it. He's bolting. He's gone, he's gone, he's gone as well. Should we chase him? Yeah, I was gonna get a gun first, so I've got no ammo left. He's got his team member down there. What have I got? He's gonna... Foul. Ugh. Shit, he's got a gun already, he's coming back. Alright, alright, that works. Fuck, silence pistol. There's um, nothing here. Here you Fuck. go. I got that. Nice one. I see him, they're over there. One's in that house. Hit him. They're split him, up. Yeah. One's gone to that back house. If we push this yellow house, we should be able to take that guy out. And then we can swing around to that back house and get the other one. And we got a foul, so this might burn you a little bit. Has he done one? Fuck he has as well. Yeah, he dipped. There he is. See him? Yep. Fuck. Yeah, it's gone. Oh man, I'm lagging like crazy. Trash or foul as well. Um, right, well, they're both in the house anyway. Yeah, let, let's yeah, let's push it. Oh, who was that? Watch the window. Yeah, let's go around the right side of it. Yeah, two of them. One in the window, one running. See the one running? He's coming around the side of you. Yeah. Down. Down. Nice. Fuck. That sniper's on us as well. Shit, Is the arm off this guy? 
Nee, ist heute. Ja, komm. Ich kümmere uns heute. Fällt mir gern. Just run past him, bro. Fucking hell. He's right here. Nice. Got him. How's he down? Should he be die straight away? self revive maybe? Possibly, yeah. I need that gun. Let's go. Oh, fuck we, got, we got loads of snipers on us as well, man. Have you got any ammo? It's alright. Tons right. of snipers on us. Um, assault rifle, yeah. Cheers, bro. That enough? Perfect. Gives me a round anyway. Oh fuck yeah, I see a sniper. Shit. Is that house opposite us, yeah? Uh-huh. Woo! Alright, but he's got his pin, didn't he? I'm trying to pop him. Oh snap. I saw Hit him. him. That pissed him off a little bit. What are we supposed to do now? Um. I hate it closer. Yeah. Yeah, no. Just close the door. We can move forward. We run to the garages on the right. He's run, he's run. So I'm jump down. He's in this building, man. Oh shit. Oh shit. Watch it, bro. Stay down, bro. Stay low. Stay oh, low. Fuck, someone else is there as well. We'll smash for two. We're we'll going back to the gulag. What do you think about the judging in the UK anyway? What do I think about what, sorry? The judging systems. The judging in general. The judging system? Do yeah, um, you think it can be quite biased or. Ooh. Do you think it's quite fair in the UK? I mean, they have. There, yeah, I think there have been occasions where there's been biased judging, but overall, I do think it's quite fair. Um, I mean, there have been, you know, it happens probably in every country, some decisions are made where it's, everyone's just like, what, how, you know what I mean? Yeah. When we've seen it's been a clear win for the, for the person who should have won. But overall, yeah, I do think it's fair. Um, I don't think it happens so much over here where, you know, if someone's in the same crew as the judge that they're getting through all the time. Yeah. I don't think it's that, that biased as opposed to other countries. Which is good. Yeah, of course. Definitely. It's not as corrupt. <laughs> you get me? Oh, fuck. <laughs> that was nasty. Have a corrupt... System. And obviously we're one of the, you know, the leading countries that are also implementing technology to our judging systems. So, uh, I think, what's his name? His name? The guy who organizes Break the System in Sheffield. Yeah. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. You know who I'm talking about, right? I know you're talking about Tom Rosen. Tom his name. Yeah, basically his, he is actually a programmer as well and he's developing a, a, ju a new judging system 
Um, so yeah, I mean, we have we're, we're we're standing pretty good, I think, on on the judging side of things. That's good. Let me try and find it. I'm looking for his name. Uh, Terrell, that's it, Premier Terrell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, him. He's a nice guy as well. So yeah, he he yeah, he's really cool, man. He's um building at a judging system. Uh, which yeah, I think it's good. It's like the owl system. I think it's good. So like, do you reckon your music that you mix is a lot different to other people's? Teregan. The music that you mix, do you think it's different to a lot of other people's? The like music you got that I make? Yeah, have you got a specific sound that you use that's uh, different to a lot of other DJs? Um, yeah. I think, because obviously, I'm like the newer, I, I fall into the newer generation of DJs. So when I would listen to like DJ Dep One, DJ Scamra, um, who else from back in the day, Timber. Obviously, these guys they do focus a lot on the funk, soul, funk and soul side of the music, and like yeah. they really dig for like the dusty breaks and all of this, which is cool. But at, at the base of it, I'm, I consider myself a hip hop DJ. So I like to throw a lot of like hip hop breaks into into battles uh, where the drums are like hip hop orientated. Um, can't fuse the same as well. Yeah, like, we do spin the funk and breaks and stuff, but when it's when you're playing that style of music for like five hours, it can get boring. So obviously we do like to switch it up and play like mic check, for example, or yeah, um, you know them kind of heavy tunes the b-boys we like to step outside of the box a little bit um so i'd say yeah i'm more hip-hop more of a hip-hop dj and i think that's one of the reasons why we've been able to last as long as we have as well because yeah we've, we've tried to create our own lanes and not just imitate and copy i think it's you know good I mean? for like that, um spectators as well you know when they hear yeah. like tracks that they know they can get into and like and sing along to if you will yeah exactly like it's always good to hear something you're familiar with yeah. and that's one of the reasons why I'm producing as well because after some time I started to get bored of playing other people's music I wanted to bring my own arsenal to the jam stuff I've been working on and that only helps solidify my name in the scene you know what I mean? If I put a track up that on online that I've made and that's circulating in the b-boy scene, it's gonna be there for a good few years, even when I'm not spinning. Other DJs are playing my shit. Yeah. So, so uh, that legacy. That, the there's legacy. always that. Yeah. There's yeah. There's that element to it. It might not happen now, but I have this, like the vision. Oh, bro, come in. Fucking killing me, man. I swear I am better in this. <laughs> no, it's all good. I'm not down your skills, bro. It annoys me when, like, someone makes some YouTube video as well. So, like, it annoys mm -hmm. me that people uh, see this back and go, like, hey, it's fucking trash. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. And I'm fucked. You managed to get him. I'm not literally surrounded. I've got no gun. Yes. Oh, that is a pistol, man. Oh my goodness. He's got nothing. 
Okay. Ah, uh, bro. I'll get you back. Hold on, you, brother. Get to the roof. Let's get that dollar. Uh oh. I don't know if that guy had a mate or not. Let's see. There's like nothing wrong with him. Oh. He's around here. Got me from behind. Sniper. <laughs> so last question, man. Uh, if someone wanted to get on. into the uh, DJ scene or breaking scene, um, how would you tell them to go about it? Someone wanted to get into the scene. Um, I would definitely say, obviously, be around the culture. Learn, you know, who's who's made a name for themselves in, in the scene. So obviously when you go to events and stuff, you know a bit about the person who's sitting in that judging seat, mm -hmm. who's judging or who's DJing, you know what I mean? Just familiarize yourself with the characters who are you know, seen as important people within the scene. Um, I'd say start it's there. Right. Yeah, Bro. smooth, <laughs> smooth. Yeah, I literally, yeah, <laughs> I was literally just focusing on talking. Um, See, so yeah, I'll do that. Uh, uh, find yourself, you know, respectable mentors who have experience and who have, you know, also made a name for themselves in some way in their local scene. Not, they don't have to be, you know, international superstars or anything like that. Just yeah. people who are known knowledgeable um, within their scene uh, and def I, I think if you start there you'll be in good hands definitely in good hands yeah, and I'm absolutely with you there man I would say practice put the time in definitely put the time in because you know I've taught breaking classes and the kids you know they come for like one or two weeks or whatever and because they don't see improvement straight away they give up and obviously yeah. this as you said is not going to happen overnight like this hip-hop thing for us it's a lifestyle like some of us live it every day you don't just turn it on and turn it off man. you get me yeah so yeah it's with you once it once you get into it it stays with you um and then it's just a matter of how far you're willing to take it yeah i'm completely with you 100 percent. That's, that's what i would say is my is definitely my verse, yeah. Um, um, and yeah, just share with others because that's the only way you're gonna get better as well. Compete against others, and a lot of people they don't like the competitive side to this hip hop thing, but because of competitions and things like that, that's how we've been able to. It, it, yeah, that's how we've been able to evolve it so far. So if you if you, if you go to the studios and practice there but then don't step in the ciphers and you know show and challenge yourself how can you expect to grow yeah any further <laughs> leave me with you so yeah just throw yourself yeah throw yourself in man. and when you're younger it's a lot easier to do that because you don't really think about external eyes watching you and things like this but it's something you have to keep with you into your adult years as well, you know what I mean. That's when you look at people like Karam and Sunny, and they're able to stand on that main stage, all thousands of people watching them. Obviously, it's a skill they've learned over the years to be able to control their nerves and still perform at a high level. Yeah, yeah. Stu like study these people. That's, that's what I would say. That's one thing that always got me was nerves. I found it hard to like think about what I was going to do next, feel yeah, I mean? it, it's, yeah. 
Yeah, it gets a lot of people, man. No, Even actually, like for me as a DJ, like when I played my first big jam, bro, my hands were shaking. Mm -hmm. Like trying to control the vinyl and that. It can't you probably tell you the same thing, bro. <laughs> like we used to joke about this shit. Remember the day, like when your hand was like trembling on the needle and shit. And now it's like it's like nothing to us, bro. But yeah. Just from the repetition, years and years of doing it. It's the same for b-boys as well. And it's that it's that moment that can make or break you. Like, are you gonna step to it or back up and, yeah. and flee? You get me? That's yeah. Like I train loads of shit, and then as soon as I it came, only s yeah. You got to the left as well. Yes. Another one. Yeah, there's another one out there as well. He like ran across. Okay. Here he is. Here. He is. Come on. Nice. Yes. Let's go, bro. Did I kill him or is he? Yeah. yeah. Let yeah. me uh, get you up. Show me uh, a bandage. That is far. That's real far. There's one there, but well, he's hit the zone as well. I ain't gonna have enough time to get to it. So have you got any money in front of you? Yeah, I've got the got enough to get you back. I mean, yeah, bear cash nice. as well. Give me that. Mate, you might be in trouble here. You need a car. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not in a good spot at all. How can I get through? Yeah, you have to get around, innit? Oh my god. Left. Left. Uh huh. Nice right, so. This is not good. No. Nope. Yeah, I can't even find. Might be even be okay, you got out running it. Yeah, I'm better now. Um, is there anything else you want to plug see. while you're here? Is there anything I want to plug? Um, yeah. Yeah, check me out on uh, social media. Uh, obviously my Instagram is still popping off, I post a lot of music there, check out my SoundCloud, uh, just search Jam Food and I should come up. And also I'm diverting a lot of my stuff to YouTube now as well, so check out my channel on there. Um, so you'll see all my music, all my production and mixtapes going up there. Um, and yeah man, just want to big up everyone in the scene man, still doing their thing under these conditions as well. Like, this hip hop shit will never die. Still yeah, going strong. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think when all of this is over and, and the first jam does happen, oh, like, it's going to go off, be insane man. Because, yeah, <laughs> of course, bro. Because everyone's. You know why people are writing like, on the streets now? It's because they have all this energy and emotions like just caged up inside. So it's going to be the same for us on the B Boy scene, on the hip hop circuit. When events come back, everyone's gonna go off, bro. But I can't in a wait. good way, in a positive way, of course. Yeah. <coughs> and you know, um, it's gonna, it's gonna be like going to your first jam all over again. <laughs> man, I can't wait. I swear. We we'll don't. I'm gonna try and get land near you. Uh, okay, I see. Fire sale. That's annoying. Okay. This this that thing he was on about, isn't it? Fire yeah, sale. mate. You can get to a, a vendor. Okay. I need to spend some of this money. Um, armpit bundle. Yep. 
self revive kit. Yep. Thank you. Nice. Free. Christ, Marky G. Okay, we're out in the open here. But we're not in a good spot. Let's ditch this garage quickly. Uh, right guys, I'm going to end up the stream here. Thank you guys for hanging out. Um, and shit, you got some right in front of you. Fuck. I got him. You just got me. I wonder if I can die going in there. Nah, bro, you should have just went. You should have carried on. It's free, though. Nice one. Sacrifice yourself. Legend. I've got all those revives, so I might be able to get out. Nope. No. I ain't got enough. I'll get some cash and get you back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So close, you're so far. Uh, yeah, guys, gonna end the stream. Thank you guys for popping in. The YouTube video will be up tomorrow at some stage, probably when I finish work. Um, and I will catch you guys later. Have a lovely evening.